Hi folks, I've been asked if I think this Matt Rempe hit is a charge, then why was this Tory Krug hit from the 2019 final not a charge? Now, first of all, I do agree with the non-call here. I don't believe this was a charge, and I'll explain why. Remember, it is true, the main reason I find the Rempe hit a charge is the distance traveled, but I want to talk about the distance traveled in terms of contributing to the force of the impact. How can Tory Krug skate all the way down the ice and not have it be charging as a result of distance traveled? Well, let's watch. Yeah, he takes four or five really quick strides, but then he does a crossover, changes direction. He's already gliding. He's changed direction again right there, crossover, then a glide, another crossover. And now from the blue line down, he's all under control. He doesn't spend all of his time skating up the ice gaining speed. He took a few quick strides to get himself going. Now he's constantly changing his angle, constantly trying to time and get his gap. He's not building up speed with every step. He's just changing position on the ice. And now he's in full plant mode, full glide, everything low, both feet on the ice forever. And they stay fully planted until contact right there. Right there at the moment of impact, his feet are still on the ice. And then he gets lifted up as a result of contact. He does not use all of that travel down the ice to build up any exceptional momentum that contributes to the velocity of this hit. With my 2024 or even 2023 lens on, I would have liked to have seen him make a play on the puck here. But he's in complete and utter control of the time of this impact, the point of of impact on his opponent's body and everything about it. Look how low he is. Look how low he stays. All he does is brace for impact. Everything is still on the ice and he's going completely core through core, shoulder on shoulder. He does not jump into that hit. He gets lifted off of his feet as a result of contact. Compare that to Rempe, he has to make up some ground really quickly. His feet are only on the ice for a very, very short period of time gliding, and he can't have time to adjust his angle the way Krug does. He takes a very poor angle of approach, a straight-on angle of approach. So he can't just violently go through this player right now. There's no way to do it safely. He needs to try and find a way to curl into impact or slow up considerably before he makes contact, but he can't. He doesn't have time and he doesn't make the right choice. He's just looking to hit, hit, hit. So he has to lift his back foot off the ice, which is not what Krug did, and he thrusts into this contact. He does try and go hip through hip, but he lifts his back foot off the ice and rotates and launches in. So his right foot stays on the ice a little bit, but not nearly as firmly as Krug's does. Here's his strides. There's one, two, three four, five, then he barely plants and then up and jumps. Here's Krug again. Compare him, very, very low, compact, both feet planted forever, doesn't lift them up at all through contact. He makes a slight adjustment on the angle, doesn't come straight in, and then goes core through core and only comes up at all as a result of hitting his opponent. Now we see Rempe, he's pretty low for a big man. His knees are bent, but his back foot comes off the ice right there well before contact because he drives into it with that leg. You can see him push off the back leg and drive into it, and most of that velocity is already created from skating over there. So the distance traveled meaningfully contributes to the violence of impact. He lifts his leg up, rides the momentum through the hit, and drives himself sideways.